Hey, how you doing? Meet planet HD 189733B, an exoplanet about 65 light years away from Earth. She's beautiful, right? Well, looks can be deceiving. First of all, HD 189, okay, before we get started, who decided on this name? Okay, what is this name, bro? Anyway, HD 189733B is 1000 degrees Celsius and has wind speeds that can reach up to 5,400 miles per hour. That's Mach 7. You can't even imagine going that fast. Oh, and did I mention that it rains glass here? Yes, glass. Why? I don't know. Don't ask me. It rains glass sideways, mind you, due to the aforementioned 5,000 mile per hour wind. Imagine a tornado full of shards of glass. Mm, that's death by more than a thousand cuts. It's a thousand degrees here and it rains glass sideways. It's a beautiful planet, don't get me wrong. But if you found yourself here, that's no different from stepping into a blender. At first, this video was gonna be about insane exoplanets, but space across the board is terrifying. So let me give you some reasons why you should agree. But before we get started, like the video, subscribe to your boy, let's get it. First, we're gonna start with the Great Attractor. I have no idea what the Great Attractor is, I'm not a scientist, but I would describe the Great Attractor as the bad bee of the universe. It's pulling everything. Apparently, everybody wants a piece of the Great Attractor. What is the Great Attractor, you ask? I have no idea. Do I look like Neil deGrasse Tyson? When I say the Great Attractor is pulling everything, I mean the Laniakea Supercluster. Hold that thought. The Laniakea supercluster is an area of space containing 100,000 galaxies including our very own Milky Way. If I remember correctly, the Milky Way is 100,000 light years across and one light year is equal to 6 trillion miles. So the Laniakea supercluster is unimaginably big. And all of that is being pulled by the Great Attractor. I don't think anybody knows what the Great Attractor is. So if you're watching this video right now and you're more educated on what the Great Attractor might be, please comment below, I will respond. It just irks me that we have this ominous Pied Piper of the universe leading us into what? Nobody seems to know that that I find that so unsettling. Speaking of galaxies guys I'd like to introduce you to Andromeda. Andromeda people is our neighboring galaxy. Everybody say hello to Andromeda We are going to collide with Andromeda. Yes collide. We are currently on a 4.5 billion year collision course with our neighboring galaxy We are going to combine and turn into one Milk Dromeda. This isn't actually something that you need to be afraid of I just wanted to mention it. You're gonna be long gone by then not me though. I'd survive two galaxies colliding. My aura would protect me. In fact, I'll stand behind LeBron and his aura will protect me, my sunshine. Okay, I wanna to talk to you guys about stars because stars are low key the most dramatic objects in the universe. Stars die and in the process do the most and I guess wanna take out everything around them. They try to do the most damage possible called a supernova. Supernova are one of the most violent events that can happen in the universe. That's like you being on your deathbed and just before you walk into the light, you decide to press a button that launches the entirety of the planet's nuclear arsenal. Also, when a star dies, if it's large enough, it can become a black hole. We hear about them all the time in media. This, this is ridiculous. First and foremost, they are tears in space time. What does that even mean? Aren't time and space fundamental aspects of our reality? Question mark. When I was writing this section of the script, I was having a whole existential crisis. Black holes are infinitely dense at the center. And if you cross the event horizon, you become isolated from space time. Nothing can escape a black hole. Anything can become a black hole, by the way. If you shrink something down into a small enough volume, it can become a black hole. I think it's called the Schwarzschild radius or something. But theoretically, you watching this video right now can become a black hole. A very small and tiny one that would evaporate away very quickly, but a black hole nonetheless. So there are large black holes, and then there are supermassive black holes. We have our very own supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A star. This thing apparently has the mass of 4 million suns. But then above that, we have ultra massive black holes. Guys, to classify as an ultra massive black hole, you need to have the mass of at least 10 billion suns. Billion. Ultra massive black holes Phoenix A and Ton 618 have masses of over 50 billion suns and are multiple times wider than our entire solar system. Our solar system, by the way, is three light years across. That's about 18 trillion miles. These black holes would look at our solar system the same way you would look at a solitary Skittle, not even a light snack. Oh, and gamma ray bursts are a thing. By the way, we're still in like the subcategories of stars because gamma ray bursts can also happen when a large star dies. Gamma ray bursts are apparently the second largest possible explosions that can happen in the universe. Second to only the Big Bang. What? Here's what would happen if a gamma ray burst hit Earth. Ozone layer damage, 
global cooling, acid rain, ionized oxygen and nitrogen, sterilization as in mass extinction, and tissue damage. Mm. Um, I'm sure that we have no idea how to stop something like that, so let's be very grateful that the chances of us being hit by a gamma ray burst are slim to none. Next, we have the expanding universe. I remember in my year nine science class, my teacher was trying to explain to the class the fact that the universe is expanding. He was really passionate about the topic and then let the class like debate our thoughts surrounding it. He was a good teacher. Shout out to Mr. White, not that one. He had a really hard time wrangling that class. If you're from the UK, you know how bad the year nine science classes used to get. But I'm multiple years older now and I still don't understand how the universe is expanding. Because from my understanding, for expansion to take place, Two things need to occur. One, for something to expand, it needs some sort of material to flow into it. And two, said something needs something outside of itself to expand into. Think of a balloon. Air is flowing into the balloon, causing the expansion, and then the balloon expands into the world around it. So the universe is expanding and matter can't be created. So the universe is already full of everything that it could be full of. That's like blowing up a balloon, tying the knot, and then the balloon still expands. Does this analogy make sense? But then what's outside the universe for the universe to expand into? Is the universe not everything? I am lost. I know there's multiverse theory and all that, where all of the universes are like little bubbles. But then in that situation, the question still remains. They're bubbles floating in what? What is outside of the universe? or universes. I don't think we'll ever know the answer to what is the universe expanding into because we can't even see the whole universe. The universe that we can observe is called, well, the observable universe. We can't see beyond this because of something called the cosmic horizon. The cosmic horizon is the edge of the observable universe and is moving away from Earth faster than the speed of light. This means that even if we could travel at the speed of light, we would never be able to reach the edge. On top of all that, the expansion of the universe is said to be caused by dark energy. What, is there some evil shaman out there using negative energy and bad vibes to fatten up the universe? My head is hot, let's move on. Okay, antimatter. So, the universe is made up of matter, right? Simple. And every matter particle has an antimatter version. Okay, cool, cool. Do you know what happens when antimatter and matter come together? They explode. In fact, the word I saw online was they annihilate each other. If you watching this video right now just happen to walk into the antimatter version of yourself, it would cause an explosion that would turn both your masses into pure energy. There apparently isn't a lot of antimatter left in the universe because it somehow disappeared after the Big Bang. Again, I'm not a scientist or astrophysicist, don't ask me. But the fact that antimatter is somewhere out there in the universe ready to kamikaze itself into standard matter is wild. The universe is so strange. Last but not least, we have aliens. I don't ever want to come into contact with these things. People don't talk about how crazy it would be for humanity to have an alien encounter enough. Probably because people think it would somehow benefit us. The last time the aliens were here, they left us with pyramids. That's why we can't recreate them. Okay, barbarian, let's think about it. You're telling me that an alien species traveled inconceivable distances to get here, slapped down a couple triangles and peaced out. Are we being for real? Why would they do that? If aliens came here, they would be so technologically advanced that they'd look at us like we are stupid. Challenges that we have, they would have overcome thousands of years prior. They would basically be gods to us. And that alone is terrifying to think about. The moment you see an alien spaceship in the sky, it's already over. The simple fact that they was able to get here is a technological feat that we may never achieve. That's like humans pulling up in a helicopter on a bunch of monkeys. We have technology that they don't even understand. They are alive simply because we allowed them to be. If aliens came here, we would be the monkeys in that scenario. Aliens would need a machine capable of traveling over the speed of light to get here. If they wanted to get here within the pilot's lifetime, Time, can you imagine the type of weapons they would have? They would probably be able to like remove your soul from your body with a gun or something. No, let the aliens stay out there if they are there. We don't want those problems. But yeah, those are some reasons why you should be scared of space. There are definitely way more reasons. So if you know some, leave them in the comment section below. Don't actually be scared of space though. I just needed a catchy video title. But anyway, thank you for watching. Take care. I'll see you guys next time I upload. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. This is my second time recording this video because for some reason my camera was out of focus and during the whole time I was recording this video there is a construction site outside making the most amount of noise so when I put this video in Adobe if the whole time I could just hear the clinging and clanging of these waste men I'm going to lose my mind